What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and DFS home here over at fakepigskin.com. With once me, once with me, once again, if I could speak, uh, it's that jet lag, Bobby. Uh, it's the real Bobby Adcock. What's up, Bobby? What's up, Kyle? How you doing, man? Um, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm, you know, should be even coming here anymore based on <laughs> what's taking place. But we will talk about it. Oh yeah. Uh, well, it, it, there's no way that you had a worse week than I did because uh, I went 0 and 3. It was awful. Um, I am seven nine and two on the season. Uh, Titans plus three. I we talked about this each and every week about how we don't bet for or against our teams, uh, and I got suckered into this stupid line, and the Titans got their butt handed to them on a platter. Uh, I gave you all the great numbers about why the over was great in the London game. Uh, the Raiders apparently forgot their offense back in Oakland and could not score to save their lives. Um, and then the Bucks, the Bucks I, gave me a little bit of an, uh, I mean, they were in that game the whole way. They had it close. They actually had it a two point game at one point. Um, they were a pitch to Deshaun Jackson away from, from maybe even winning that game. So I don't feel quite as bad, but yeah, it was, it was rough. Uh, now that I do want to preface this by saying my college picks have been absolute fuego lately. Um, and I did very, 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 very well on Saturday. Um, so if you are looking for college picks, make sure you, uh, you check out my college football picks against the spread. I think I'm like, uh, like 13 and one or 13 and three or something in my last three weeks. I don't know something, something insane. But, uh, that said, uh, NFL did not go quite as well. Uh, why don't you break down your picks for me? Yeah, well, it's um, it's all bad. So, well, I mean, so the Steelers, the one thing I think I was the most uh, mm -hmm. staunchly supporting, I was just saying basically that uh, the Steelers are going to put the Bengals back in the shallow end of the pool. Um, they, and they did do that in, in just classic uh, Steelers-Bengals fashion. So that was that was good. But, you know, honestly, the, the Rams thing, uh, second week in a row, where I just keep saying, hey, I'm going to take these guys. If they're, if they're single-digit favorites, I'm going to jump on them. Uh, against you know anybody else besides maybe four or five teams, mm -hmm. uh, they were in good. They were in good position to do that, but uh, again, the back door uh, touchdown just just negated the cold cover. So uh, lose that one, and then um, I I I talked myself into the Raiders. Um, I, I talked myself in them in DFS as well. Like last minute, I was like, you know what? I just you know the whole London game, high scoring. I was like, you know what? I think this could be a, a sneaky stack. I'm gonna. I'm gonna set a lot of Raiders here. I think this is gonna be a good good day for the Raiders, and wow, uh, not not the case. And you know, really, before I get to we get to week seven, and I continue to embarrass myself here, um, I just want to say that when I was just writing about this last year, I was 63% against the spread <laughs> for the regular season, and now that I'm talking to you, I think it's obvious that all of my powers and my clairvoyance has been you've either cast a spell on me or I've just <laughs> I've turned it over to you. So I'm blaming you for this, um, but uh, I'm going to just have to fight through it and overcome or, or uh, you know, just never come back again. So no. we'll, we'll, we'll see yeah. maybe one more week. It's the power of the microphone, Bobby. I've, I've, I've zapped your powers. Uh, I've taken your luck. And, uh, you know, it, it, this is what I think to myself every week. I think, what would Bobby do here? And then I just do the opposite. And it works out really, really well. well and <laughs> Except for last okay, week when, well, I, when I second guess myself. Well, I'm not gonna go. I'm not going full Costanza mode yet. I'm not just gonna go opposite of everything I think. But one more week, and uh, we're 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 turning trending in that direction. So uh, we'll we'll see where it goes. Uh, we'll see how this week goes. But uh, it's it's getting um, it's 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 pretty rough right now. I think the total right now on this podcast is five twelve and one for me. Uh, that's in a smoldering hot. 12, 17, and 1 on the full uh, slate that I had document on Twitter and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. anyway, um, it's been great. We'll, we'll, see, uh, <laughs> we'll, see how, we'll see how much better it can get. Yeah, I got a feeling, Bobby. I don't know why, but I feel like by the end of the season, we'll be around that 55, 60%, which means based upon the way we've gone, we're going to be um, on fire the rest of the way. So, it now is the time to jump on the bandwagon and ride the wave because um, – you know, I, I don't think things are going to get much worse. I think we're only going to improve from here. Um, we talked about it last week too. How it just—it was an ugly week. It was an ugly board. 
we weren't really in love with any of the lines. So, um, yeah, but I think uh, I'm going to let you go first because obviously you got one more right than I did. Um, so let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're leaning and uh, who is your first pick of the week. All right. Well, I, like I said, I'm not going full Costanza, but I am I am kind of l- looking in certain things where I look at and go, eh, that looks a little bit odd. Um, last week I went against the Bengals and said, you know, that this this team is – they're fake. They're not a division winner. They, you know, I don't think they're necessarily even a playoff team. But, um, you know, this week they, they go on the road to Kansas City, who's flying high, coming they come off their, their first loss of the season. Um and on Sunday night, but still, still looked really good. Um, and now they're coming home, and and I, I look at the that line at six, and I see, geez, you know, man, how many people are looking at Kansas City too, and how many how many people are teasing Kansas City down to a pick? Yep. How many money yep. parlay uh, money line parlays are they in? And I'm like, man, this is this is just shaping up so great for, for that for Vegas really needing. Uh, Cincinnati here to maybe not even cover, but maybe even win this game. Um, and, and, you know, I think that Cincinnati Pittsburgh matchup anyway is in their heads. I mean, I, I don't think there's any question about that. So, um, so I, I think this is a game here where Cincinnati bounces back. They go back on the road. They've been able to score very well this year uh, that they, they've been scoring on, on all kinds of teams. So I think they'll definitely be able to score on Kansas city. Who's been uh, terrible defensively. So, I, I like I'm gonna take Cincinnati in the six points here on the road at Arrowhead. I love it. I'm hundred percent on board with that, uh, which probably means it's gonna end in a giant ball of flame. But like I said, Bobby, this is the week we get back. This is the week we get going in the right direction. Uh, if I'm taking that line, you know I'm I'm gonna actually it's a, because it's a Sunday night game, I'm gonna wait until the last possible minute because people are gonna use it as a get right game. They're gonna go, okay, the Chiefs taking them at home. You know, we saw what they did in New England last week. They put up so many points. Uh, so that line, I, get, I guarantee you, gets to at least seven, maybe seven and a half. That's when I jump on the Bengals. That's when I pound that number. And I think the Chiefs probably win. Um, but I, I think it's like a field goal game either way. And I'm, I could not agree more. Uh, so, Bobby, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm going to go back to – I'm going to go back to my, my, my trusty – I'm going to take underdogs. I'm going to take uh, teams at home, teams that I trust. I'm going to, you know, not get, not take my favorite teams, not get a little crazy. Um, and people may think I'm crazy for this one, but I am going to take. And and your little information, we were we had a little pre pre show powwow. It kind of has me worried a little bit, but I'm taking the Buffalo Bills plus seven and a half at the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Derek Anderson is starting for the Bills. Um, so, but like, I, I feel like if this game was Josh Allen, not Derek Anderson, it's probably four or five. I feel like it's, I feel like seven, over a touchdown. Like if it's a touchdown that, that probably has me a little more hesitant, but seven and a half is just too much. Um, the Colts have Andrew Luck and he is great at football. But he's also not throwing the football down the field. This is a dink and dunk guy. This is a uh, a Colts team that has only covered two of their six games. This is a Colts team that has only won one game all season long. Um, I, I don't know that they should be a, a seven and a half point favorite against anybody. Um, and, and I know Derek Anderson starting, and I know that's worrisome. Um, I think this is going to be an ugly game. I think this is a game that uh, nobody's going to really want to win. Maybe it's 17-13. Maybe it's 16-13. Um, I, I just I feel like if I can get seven and a half points with the Bills, even on the road, um, I'm going to take it. And, you know, I'm looking at the, the live numbers. The, the Bills are getting 46% of the bets but getting 57% of the money. So – Somebody smart somewhere is in agreement with me on this one, um, and I like Buffalo. I, I don't mind it, kind of for similar reasons I talked about Cincinnati. I think it's good. It's it's going to be the obvious like, what is every sports book in America cheering for right now? Yeah, they're going to need uh, they're going to need Buffalo to cover in a lot of cases probably 
bust up some teasers and parlay money line parlays too mm-hmm. right yeah so, i see a um, lot of a lot of colts chiefs money lines a lot of oh. colts chiefs teases <laughs> And, and when everybody thinks one thing and, and wants to jump on the bandwagon, I'm sure we can find a, a third game to, to get in on. But, like, I feel like that's when you want to fade that and go the other way. And, and uh, you know, we both – we're both seeing the ball well this week, I think, Bobby. So I, I'm glad we're – I'm glad we're heading in the right direction. Uh, why don't you hit me with your, uh, your second play this week? So um, kind, of, kind of sticking with, uh, you know, maybe – you know, going back to teams that you are thought initially were good and maybe kind of started to struggle a bit and are now at a point in the year where I think, I think we're starting to get a feel for these teams. Mm-hmm. Um, the Vikings are someone who I think they got that really bad loss out of their system with the Bills um, at home. And I, that was also coming off a really strange incident with Everson Griffin, who I know they've still going on, but I think they've kind of moved on and, and just kind of re recalibrated a little bit um and and they've they in their in their wins they've been ahead they've had 20 point lead uh 17 and 17 point leads in the second half the last two weeks um so i i think they're starting to come together a little bit and i think the jets uh they they have you know they're kind of a cute team right they're three and three um, they've, they've had some, a lot of either or games that they've been involved in, uh, where that, that, that record could be a little bit skewed as well. Uh, and they, they're also, they're number one in the NFL in takeaways. So I think they're, they've had 15, which is astronomical at this point in the season. So I, I think that, that type of number kind of regresses a little bit and it also skews their record overall. They, the first play of the game for the Colts last week was like a screen pass interception to the house for the Jets. So, I mean, they're just, they, they're getting some good force right now, uh, and, I, and I think that kind of runs out. And I, I'm going I'm to treat the Vikings like a Dallas here. I'm going to say, okay, you guys are the better team. You're the better team on paper. This is a game you should go in. You should win. You should win it by a touchdown at least. So I'm going to go Vikings, and I'm going to lay the three and a half at the Jets. Yeah, I, I think that's the right side. There's part of me that feels a little bit uncomfortable just because that secondary has not been good. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, without Everson Griffin, that's been a little bit of a problem. But I, I think I'm 100% on board with you uh, in terms of this offense is too good. Uh, you know, they finally got the ground game going last week against Arizona. I think the I think the Vikings go in. I think they reassert themselves because I still think this is a very good team, a team that can can be competitive in the a- NFC. And if they beat, uh, you know, if they beat New Orleans or they beat um, uh, the Rams in the playoffs, like I wouldn't shock me. I think this team has all the pieces to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm on board with that pick. And um, yeah. I, and it, and it- it looks like they're getting. It looks like they're getting Cook back. They've done this all without Cook, mm-hmm. so it looks like they're getting him back. In their Jets receiving core, they there's so many injuries in the receiving core right now, yeah. um, so that they're they're potentially missing all their starters, um, except maybe one. So I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Vikings here. Yep, I could not agree more. Uh, my next pick. Um, okay, so last week, I uh, thought. There's no way the Bears lose. There is no friggin' way the Bears lose. There's, you know, but the line got crazy. People overreacted to the rocket ship under center, and it went from like three or four points to a touchdown by kickoff. That's never a good sign. You never want to be with the team that has the ballooning line. Um, usually it's going to end poorly. And sure enough, not only did the Dolphins cover, but they won outright. This week, they're at home again, um, facing your Detroit Lions, coming off the bye. Give me the Lions, minus three. This is the, <laughs> I think, I think my favorite, one of my, may, pro, I think it's my favorite play of the week. Um, if you want to, you want to hear something crazy, Bobby? Brock oh, Osweiler oh. has made his first career start for the Houston Texans, the Denver Broncos, and the Miami Dolphins against the Chicago Bears. And in those yeah. games, he is 3-0. and um, Very bizarre stat. I wish I had known coming into the game. Maybe I could have, you know, taken advantage of that a little bit. Uh, Brock Osweiler is terrible at football. There is a reason the Texans gave up a second round to pick to get him off their roster at, at, at his cap number. 
Uh, obviously, teams kind of talked themselves into glimpses of what we saw last week. Uh, I think the Lions' defense is good. I think their offense is even better. Uh, carry on Johnson, who left the game against the Packers two weeks ago, uh, should be fine, should be good to go. I expect the Lions, you know, like we talked about with the Vikings, I think the Lions go into Miami. I think they put it on the Dolphins. I think they win this game comfortably. I don't, I, despite their 4-2 and two record, they're not good. Like, I know they, they've had some breaks. They've had some weird games. They've had, you know, the seven-hour delay against the Titans, uh, the game last week, obviously. So, I, I just, like, this, uh, maybe, and it's a little public side for me, so I don't feel amazing. But, like, sometimes they're, they're just so good that you have to take the line. Uh, give me those Lions uh, minus three. I agree with everything you said, except I think you uttered the phrase, the Lions' defense is good, or I think they're good. That, well, that, I, I think they have pieces that are interesting that could be really good against Brock Osweiler. Let's put it that way. How is that? Is that better? Uh, uh, that, that's a better way of clarifying it. Uh, no, yeah, look, I, I think um, that was – so the Bears, you know, like, look it, it, look, it was really funny when it all happened, and we all know the result, but, like, when the Bears got up 21-10 last yeah. week, it was like, yeah. all right, yep, here we go. And they and, were going in, they were going to score again, and right. And, and and look, let's let's be let's be honest. If you watch the game and, and, and you're honest about it, um, whatever I don't know, 300 or whatever he threw for, like 270 of it was yards after the catch yeah. on crazy plays from Albert Wilson that yeah. where he there was I don't know a dozen tackles missed. Like it was, it was, those were so fluky, so stupid plays. They like, they're one in a million. They all should have been maybe 10, maybe 20 yard gains at best. And they end up turning into the house. It's just, it, it's, it's so, I mean, that's why, you know, you, you want to make sense. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Albert, so, Albert Wilson had 155 yards receiving of Brock's 380 and, Two of those came on long, like 60, 70 yard touchdowns. One where, like you mentioned, he was juking and jiving and jumping, and all of a sudden he's around five defenders and in the end zone, and nobody knows how he did it. Uh, so yeah, it's just, sometimes weird stuff happens, and maybe weird stuff happens again this week. But I, I have a very, very hard time seeing the Dol- the Lions lose, and especially, and, and I expect them to not only win, but I expect them to cover win this game kind of, you know, seven to 10 points. Yeah. I mean, and I, I can see them losing anything, but I, that's fine. I'm, I, I can't, I can't do it, but I'm totally fine. I understand the logic and, mm-hmm. you know, once well, again, you don't bet on or against your team. So you just don't ne- do it. Never, never do it. Hit me um, with your third pick of the week. Well, speaking of, of my teams, you know, I, I pretty much like every week I kind of adopt a team that I, 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 not every week, but I every season, every few weeks, I just kind of, you know, I, I can't, I can't emotionally invest with my own team because they've taken my soul. So, <laughs> I, I have to kind of like, you know, get get involved with these other teams. Um, and, and you know, I, I've talked about the Bears a lot this this year, and I liked them going in, and after they got Mac, obviously that that kind of, you know, put me over the top like everyone else. Um, and they they they've been a they've been you know okay uh, on the field. Um, uh, that, that that loss last week is obviously I think I still think it's a little flukish, but it happened. Um, and in good teams, they don't they shouldn't let that happen, or at least not if they let it happen, it's 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 only once. So, um, look, I think this is a game where they're they're at home against a Patriots team that isn't. This isn't a great Patriots team. The offense is certainly coming together much more than it was earlier in the year. But um, look, I've liked the Bears so far this year. Uh, and I, I think they're, I think the defense is with Mac. I, he's questionable right now, but if he's playing, um, I think this is a great defense. And I haven't seen the Patriots really go up against any real defense this year, with the exception of maybe the Jags. Um, other than that, they haven't really played anybody. So I'm not completely sold on on this offense and, and where it's at and all this stuff. Uh, with you know, with Kansas City last week, like Kansas City is just trying to outscore everybody. So. I'm not sold on them offensively just quite yet, and um, and look, I I think I have to back the Bears in this spot and just go, hey, you know what? You're a good defense. If you're a good team, you're good. You just came off an embarrassing loss. Mm-hmm. You should win this game at home. You yep. should win this game. So uh, I could I'm not sticking- agree. I could not agree more, Bobby. This is uh, the Bears are absolutely the right side. They're getting 
forty-one percent of the money, just despite getting only twenty-six percent of the bets. So the money's coming in on Chicago. They're obviously the home team. You love a home team getting points. Uh, New England played in that up and down game. Their defense is not good, so Trubisky and company should be able to score. I think the Bears' defense, like you said, is the is the best defense they've seen all season. Uh, the Chiefs' defense is a train wreck, and, and you know, and Mahomes set him up with some bad plays and some uh, short fields, and that's you know, obviously, uh, you know, it it, it it helped you know, kind of lead them to such a huge outbreak. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think the Bears are the right side. Uh, I think the Bears probably win this game. Um, and even if they don't, I, I could see like a, a weird 21-20, uh, 23-26. I don't know, something strange, uh, kind of a little more grinded out. Um, and, and, yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you on this one. Yeah, I, I just think it's, it's one of those games where it, it's time to time – to, I, want, I want someone to show me something. New England, you show me you're, you're a, where you're at. If, or if you're a great team or you're a great offense, you will win – the Bears, hey, this should be a game. If you're if you're what you think you are, or you're a playoff team or whatever, you should win this game. I'm going to back them here. Uh, I, I like them to bounce back, and I like them to, to win this game. Yep. Uh, I'm going to have a very similar mindset in terms of I want to see who you are. I want to see if you're for real. I want to see if you're a team that thinks you can compete uh, for the playoffs and, and potentially more. I am going to take – the Baltimore Ravens minus two and a half at home against the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are coming into this game off a bye. Obviously, in terms of their their offense, it's incredibly impressive. Bree sets the record. Kamara, they got Ingram back. They can run up and down the field. They can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, this Ravens defense, I think, is very, very good. Um, obviously, against the run, Third, third in the league in terms of rushing yards. But they're also very, very good against the pass. If you want to hear a weird stat of something that maybe that gives something, I don't know. Uh, Drew Brees has never beaten the Baltimore Ravens. Um, it's the only team he doesn't have a win against. It's very, very strange. Uh, I think the, the Saints are a team that works really well off, yeah. of, off of the run. I think that's how they establish their offense. I think the, they do a lot of stuff off of that. Uh, Baltimore, you can't run against them. But you also can't throw. And New Orleans, while their run defense has been good, uh, their back end is a mess. And you can throw on them. And we'll, we'll talk about this more when I, we get to the Ravens uh, in the DFS pod. But uh, Joe Flacco, I think, has a good game here. I think uh, they throw for a good amount of yards. And I think your Baltimore Ravens make a statement at home and beat the Saints, you know, go uh, by by at least three or more. Yeah, I mean, you know, I if any metric you look at, um, a, anything you look at, Baltimore's kind of they're pretty high up there. Um, so I, it, they're an interesting team. You know, you, you don't you don't think they're really, um, you know, great at, at any part of what they're doing so far. Are they great? What do they do? What's their identity? You know, are they a great running team? Are they a great passing team? Uh, do, they, they, you know, they, they play solid defense, but they're just kind of – that's the thing. They're just kind of solid everywhere. Yeah. So um, I, I think it's inter- – I, I think it's probably the most fascinating matchup of, mm-hmm. this, of, of this week. So it's a stay away from me. I can't I, – like I, I look at this game for a while. I was like, I just can't – Yeah. I can't convince myself of anything, but – um, I like the pick. I, I think it's uh, I, I, th- I think it's ballsy, and um, yeah, I I'm gonna stay away. If I probably had a pick, I think that stat you mentioned about Breeze never beating Baltimore is just bizarre. Yeah, uh, but it's the only team I he doesn't have a win against. That, that, that's that's very bizarre. But uh, um, that that would probably swing me in their direction. But uh, stay away. But I I, I I I like what you're doing. I know where your head's at. Yeah, and 67% of the money despite 43% of the bets. So another thing that gives me a little a little excitement, a little positivity in terms of the direction I'm heading. And, you know, it, everybody's going to look at this, this Saints team. And they're going to go, D- wait, they're getting only two and a half? Like, why, why, why am I not taking the Saints? I'm putting the Saints in every parlay, every teaser, um, and, and, you know, the, and it's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. 
Uh, okay, Bobby, this was a lot of fun, obviously. Uh, we're going to hit the pause button, obviously jump into our DFS pod, hopefully help you guys win some money on DraftKings this week. Uh, so if you play over on DraftKings, make sure you check out uh, mine and Bobby's thoughts. Even if you don't, if you play DFS, we'll give you some good thoughts and, and whatnot. Uh, but good luck on your plays. Uh, ob obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know in the comments. Who do you like? Who do you think we're crazy to take? Uh, you know, where, where should we look in terms of NFL games this week? Um, if you're on iTunes, if you're on uh, Spotify, if you're on Stitcher, uh, you know, hit us up on Twitter at NotoriousKRO, at RealBobbyAdcock. Obviously, head over to FakePigskin.com and check out all of our terrific work. Uh, we have all kinds of content going up, obviously rankings, Bobby's uh, college football DFS stuff, uh, more betting stuff, anything you need, it's up over there. Uh, but good luck in week eight, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Good luck, guys. If in doubt, just take the opposite of everything I say. <laughs> yeah, fade, fade us, and uh, you'll win every time.